Hi, my name is Cody. I'm with Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply, and today Northern Brewer is going to show you how to build a keezer. So what is a keezer? It's basically a repurposed chest freezer for serving kegged beer. Building a keezer is a fairly easy process, as long as you have a little bit of know-how and the right tools and accessories. Before we get started, I do want to say that, like most things in home brewing, there's more than one way to do this project, and there is no cookie cutter answer. We're just going to show you one way to get it done. The whole thing begins with a chest freezer. These you can find at most appliance stores or on eBay and Craigslist, and they come in all sorts of sizes. There are three things to consider when choosing a chest freezer. First, how much space are you willing to dedicate to the keezer inside your house, basement, or living room? Second, how much beer do you plan on serving? Two kegs or 12 kegs? And third, do you want to fit your CO2 container on the inside, or will it be sitting outside of the freezer? Purchase a chest freezer accordingly. Here's a quick look at what we're about to do. Disconnect the freezer door hinges, remove the lid of the freezer, build a collar to house our tap faucets, assemble and connect gas side and liquid side tubing, reattach the hinges and lid, attach our faucet shanks and faucets, set a temperature control for our beer serving temperature, and finally, have a beer. Ready? Let's do this. Once you have the chest freezer in your work area, we want to remove the hinges. This is where our first bit of advice comes in handy. Have a partner. There are several parts of the keezer building process that are best handled with four hands if possible. This first part could be dangerous if you don't have some help. As you remove the top and bottom screws of the hinge, the spring inside will react, swinging out and possibly injuring you. Use caution. Have your building buddy hold the hinge in place as you remove the screw, then slowly ease the spring out. Repeat this process on the other hinge. Set these screws aside as we will be using them later. Take a look at your hinges before purchasing the materials for your collar. Depending on the hinge size, shape, and placement, you may need to adjust the size of the lumber you purchase. Next, we are going to build the collar. Think of the collar as a spacer into which we are going to drill holes for the beer lines and tap faucets. We do this so we don't have to drill directly into the freezer, its cooling line, and electrical components, which could ruin your freezer and potentially be dangerous. First, measure the dimensions of the top lip of your chest freezer from edge to edge. The freezer in our video measures 48 inches long by 27 inches deep. We suggest using 2x4s for the collar. Measure the boards and cut them for the lengths of your freezer. Remember to take into consideration the build of your collar when blueprinting your design. The width of your lumber will affect the board's required length. You could also have these boards cut for you at a hardware or lumber store based on your freezer's measurements. Before actually constructing the collar, set the pieces on top of the freezer and make sure they fit up against one another with no large gaps or excess wood hanging over the side of the freezer. You want the boards to be flush with the outside perimeter of the cooler. Before we can construct the collar, we want to drill the holes for the faucet taps. This is easier to do while the boards are still separate. Figure out which board will be your front-facing tap handle board. Next, decide where exactly you'd like your tap handles to be placed. Front and center, off to the side, your choice. You'll also want to decide how high up you want them. We chose to place ours slightly lower to avoid a lip in our freezer lid. With a spade bit, drill your holes, leaving at least three inches between each hole for proper spacing. After the first hole is drilled, check to make sure your shanks fit through the opening. Then proceed with drilling the rest of your tap faucet holes. Our keezer will not only house five CO2 tap faucets on the front, but one stout faucet on the side. With your holes drilled, it's time to construct the collar. For this step, you'll need at least eight wood screws, in our case one and three quarter inches long, and an appropriate drill bit for priming a hole. Have your building buddy hold the first two boards flush together. Prime the screw holes with a drill bit, then insert the screws to fasten the two boards together. In a perfect world, you'll be able to do this without the board splitting. But if it does form a small split, relax, don't worry, we can fix that later. Repeat this process for all corners of the collar until you have a sturdy rectangular frame that rests perfectly on top of the cooler. Once you have the frame fit for the freezer, it's time to apply sealant and let it set for a few days. Make sure to choose a sealant that will properly adhere wood to plastic and functions at whichever temperature it will be resting at over the next few days. This can be found at any major hardware store. Apply it generously to the top lip of the open freezer. With your partner, carefully set the collar on the sealant. Make sure it lines up perfectly with the outside edges of the freezer. Wipe away any excess sealant with a paper towel. The sealant needs to set now for a few days. Follow the directions on the packaging and resist the urge to go any faster. We suggest weighing it down to help set. For this, we set the lid back on top and put a few kegs on top of that. 
You can also use free weights, bricks on top of a blanket, or any other heavy item you've got laying around. We're going to leave the freezer like this for two to three days to ensure a proper seal. While waiting for the collar to adhere properly, you can use this downtime to assemble your gas and liquid side tubing to ensure they're ready to install the moment your collar is ready. Let's begin with the gas side. Here is a look at the tools and parts you will need. A CO2 canister, a dual gauge CO2 regulator, quarter inch barb swivel nuts, roughly four feet of quarter inch ID gas line tubing, Oetker clamps, a CO2 distributor six way with quarter inch MFL shutoffs, and ball lock disconnects, quarter inch MFL gas. For those of you already kegging, these parts should be fairly familiar. The only new tool we'll be adding is a gas distributor for getting CO2 from one canister to your multitude of kegs. The first step is to connect your regulator to your distributor. Measure out how far away your CO2 canister will be from your distributor and cut that length of quarter inch ID gas tubing. In each end, you'll want to first place an Oetker clamp over the tubing, followed by your quarter inch swivel nut. Then simply fasten the Oetker clamp into place. Once this gas line is complete, you can screw one end into your regulator and the other end into the gas side of your distributor. In order to properly use the Oetker clamps, you'll need the Oetker clamper to tightly squeeze the clamp shut. The good and bad thing about Oetker clamps is that once they're in place, they don't come off easily, so be sure you're getting it right the first time. Something you'll find when working with tubing is that it can be difficult to get the smaller pieces inserted into the open end. Brute force can work, but a much easier solution is heating some water and soaking the ends of your tubing for a minute or so. This will soften the tubing and allow greater ease connecting the accessories. Next we'll want to prepare the gas lines going from the distributor to your kegs. Measure out how far away from the distributor your kegs will be, three to four feet is usually plenty, and cut your tubing accordingly. Now we're going to attach the exact same pieces as before on either end, an Oetker clamp followed by a swivel nut. Once this is complete, simply screw your gas side ball lock disconnect on one end and attach the other end to your distributor. Repeat this process for each keg and you're ready to move on to the next step. Now that we've got our gas side ready, let's look at the liquid side. Here are the tools and parts we're dealing with here. A ball lock disconnect, five feet of 3 16 ID beverage line tubing, connected with Oetker 145 clamps. You'll also need the following. Tailpiece, quarter inch stainless, beer shank wing nut, Oetker 145 clamps, black neoprene beer shank washers, beer shank stainless four inches. Now let's put it all together. You'll want to make sure to use 3 16 inch tubing for your liquid side. At five feet in length, this provides the proper amount of resistance to serve foam-free beer. Were you to use quarter inch tubing, for example, the beer flows so rapidly that excessive foaming becomes an issue. We're going to start by putting the Oetker clamp over the tubing, followed by the liquid side ball lock, and then using our Oetker clamper to get a tight connection. On the other end of the liquid side tubing, you'll first put the Oetker clamp over the tubing, followed by the wing nut, and finally the tailpiece, again tightly squeezing the clamp into place. You do not need to force the entire length of the tailpiece inside of the tubing. It's better to leave some room for the wing nut to unscrew properly. You'll need to repeat this procedure for each liquid line you plan on creating, in our case six times. At this point, we have everything we need to finish our keyser. Once the collar is sealed, we're ready to install all of our hardware. First, let's carefully remove the weight from the lid. You can use any wood putty or patch to fix gaps that formed while constructing the collar. No harm, no foul. Installing the shank is as simple as unscrewing the outside washer, placing the shank through the hole that you drilled on day one, and hand tightening it into place, making sure that the faucet connector is on the outside. Repeat for each shank. Installing the liquid tubing is just as easy. Grab your neoprene beer shank washer and place it on the tailpiece inside of the wing nut. Then simply screw the wing nut into place on the end of your shank, again repeating for each shank. Voila, your liquid lines are ready. There are two things to consider while attaching your CO2 distributor. First, make sure it's in a place that can easily reach all of your kegs. And second, make sure it's out of the way of your lid hinges. Attaching the distributor is as simple as gently screwing it hand tight into the collar. There's no need for this to be completely tight or flush. Do what works for you. In our design, we chose to leave the CO2 canister inside of our freezer. Note that if you go this route, the pressure gauge on your canister will read closer to 650 or 700 PSI due to the drop in temperature in your freezer. This is completely normal and causes no problems for your design. 
Another option if you have a smaller freezer and want to use that space for another keg is to leave your CO2 canister on the outside of the freezer. In this case, you simply want to drill another hole through your collar and thread the tubing from your canister through it to the distributor. Either way, make sure that your distributor valves are set to the off position for now. Now it's time to reattach the hinges. Place the lid on the collar and make sure the hinges line up flush with where you plan to attach them. This will vary from freezer to freezer. In our case, we're putting screws into both the collar and back into the freezer. This is another time where it can be helpful to have a buddy. Remember, these springs can be strong. Having a friend to help hold them in place can make reattaching the hinges much simpler and safer. Start by reinserting the screws you remove from the body of the cooler on day one. If the hinges are properly aligned, this should be easy to do by hand. Next, using an appropriate drill bit, prime the hole for the part of the hinges that will be connected to the collar. Now, insert the wood screws to attach the hinge to the collar. Open the lid and make sure everything lines up perfectly before continuing. Once your hinges are connected and your lid is secure, it's a good time to move your freezer into position before it has the additional weight of full kegs inside. Now is also a good time to attach and adjust your temperature control unit. Plug your control unit into a nearby outlet and plug your freezer into the control unit. Then place the probe inside of your freezer and set the temperature to your desired serving temp, roughly 40 to 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Attaching your faucets is as easy as can be. Just bring the faucet to the shank and screw it into place, keeping the faucet vertically aligned. One tool we recommend is the faucet wrench. Specifically built for this process, it allows you to get a tighter seal than just hand tightening wood. Repeat this step for each faucet. We finish our keyser with a fancy stout faucet on the side. Again, a faucet wrench ensures a tight seal. The final touch is a nice tap handle for each faucet. Hand tighten each handle using the spacer on the faucet to adjust the height as needed. Here at Northern Brewer, we offer a wide variety of handles from economy and stout handles to chalkboard and dry erase. Before putting your kegs inside the keyser, make sure all connections along the collar are tight, inside and out. Now comes the hard part, choosing which beer you want on tap. Place your kegs inside of your keyser and attach the gas and liquid ball locks. Set your CO2 canister to serving pressure, then open the gas valve on the distributor for that keg. Do this for all the kegs you plan to serve. Before you put your beer on tap, it's a good idea to run some cleaner through the lines. One good method is to fill a keg with beer line cleaner or even just some PBW, pressurize it, and pour through each line. It's a good idea to clean your lines regularly. Good beer poured through moldy lines quickly turns into bad beer. After running cleaner through your lines, it's a good idea to rinse them with water. We suggest also from a pressurized keg, before you attach your keg of beer. One final option for your keyser is a drip tray. This easy to install item comes in many sizes, so choose the one that best suits your design. And that's it! With the keyser properly built and all the lines in place, it's time to enjoy a homebrew. You deserve it. Building a keyser at home is a great project. I know I enjoyed doing it myself. You get cold beer on tap, it looks wonderful, and you avoid the tangled mess of picnic tap lines in your freezer. Again, this is just one way to do it, not the way to do it. For more information on parts and accessories, you can visit us at northernbrewer.com. You can also get in touch with other home brewers and keyser builders on our forum. A hand-built keyser is just another way to brew, share, and enjoy.